Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Waldo All Inks. And here I'm going to be working on an issue of X Men Blue issue number nine. This is where I'm going to be inking a splash page and I'll ink all the outside lines, all the lines from Cyclops Optic Glass that goes around his body and all the other characters. So, what I'll do is I'll use a brush and then I'll ink long lines, I'll ink broken lines, and sometimes I'll go back and continue that line. So without further ado, here we go. Brush pen and I'm dipping it into the inkwell. I'll take a scratch paper or maybe another piece of artwork and start it out with the black area just to make sure I get a nice fine tip. And once I get the nice fine tip, I'll start inking uh, Cyclops Optic Blast. You can always use a ruler as well as a micron or a tech pen or a quill. In this case, since I'm gonna ink all those other ribbons you see on this page, those curvy optic blast ribbons, I'm gonna start with a brush and uh, finish with a brush. So more of these straight lines. When I'm inking these straight lines, I'm also thinking about line weights, thick to thin. That way you're not getting a, a flat, dull line. So more of the um, optic blast area. After I inked all the straight lines, I'm going to start inking all the curves. We're going to call these optic glass area ribbons. I'm going to ink all these ribbons, inking all the ribbons that are in front first. The reason I like inking objects in front is once I'm done with the, those lines, I can ink everything in the back later. Right here, you see how I'm inking behind those foreground ribbons with the background ribbons. This way, your lines will be smoother and you don't have to worry about making mistakes and crisscrossing lines, overlapping lines. So here I'm varying the line weights and then I'm beefing up some of the lines just to give those lines a more smoother feel to it. Okay, right here you can see me inking off the bleed area. Okay, and I'll go over that a little bit later when, when I'll show you more of, of me inking off of the bleed area. Here I'm inking more of the uh, the ribbons now as you can see I'm constantly spinning the page I'm constantly spinning the bristle board as if it's uh, like a pottery wheel the reason for that is because my right hand inks a smoother concave line concave line is uh, an arc that curves away from your hand that's that curve it's easier to ink an arc away from your hand than inking a convex line a convex line is an arc that goes bow just towards your hand. If you ink a line, a long bow line that goes away from your hand, it's much easier. If you haven't done so, you use a pencil, use a pen, try to draw a concave line and a convex line. You'll see that the concave line, a line that bulges away from you, your hand, will be much easier than a convex line. So more of these uh, con cave lines. Notice here I'm inking off the page. Some of those artwork won't be scanned nor will it be shown up in the uh, comic book uh, when it's printed. But I ink off the page because when I'm done I usually scan the page and if I don't have enough artwork I will have to go back in there with Photoshop and touch up some of the art, redraw some of the art. For me it's better to have more art than not enough art. That way I don't spend too much time in post-production. Here I am dipping more ink and I'm continuing with more of those ribbons. Now more curves, slowly concentrating, taking your time, try not to make mistakes. Okay, now I'm inking. Notice that inside strip is thinner than the outside strip. The outside lines, I call those a holding line. I want all holding lines to be a little bit slightly thicker than some of the inside lines. Just like in your figure, you want the holding line of the figures to be a little bit thicker. Again, I dip the ink and then I'm grabbing another bristle board of something else I'm working on. And I'll start off that with uh, in the black area just to make sure that my, my brush is uh, a nice fine tip. So more curves on these, uh, these strips, the Cyclops, the optic glass. Now keep in mind, you want these curves to be as smooth as you can. Now pay attention to how I'm starting the point of the curves. Imagine, uh, right here, I made a mistake. You see how that line crossed? I would take like a white out to white that out. Now back to what I was saying. When I start these curves, notice how I'm 
landing the curves and how I'm ending the curves. All the time when I'm inking those lines, you'll notice that the tips are sharp as I'm putting the brush down. And then as I'm ending the line, I want those lines to be sharp as well. Imagine you're flying an airplane. You want to take off very softly. And then when you land the airplane, you want to land very softly. Now imagine the airplane as the brush. When I start inking with a brush, I'm landing slowly. I'm slowly putting the brush to paper. That way you can get a nice fine tip. And then as I'm ending the line, I'm lifting the brush up away from the bristle board. That way you would get a nice finer tip. Now here's all of Cyclops Optic Blast, all the curves I've done. All of this in real time took about 30 minutes. So it does take a little bit of time to ink all these lines. After I'm done inking all the foreground objects, in this case, Cyclops, Optic Glass, all those ribbons, then I would move on to the next step, which is inking the figures. But for this video, I like inking, actually inking in general, I like inking everything in front first and then moving my way back. And then here's Cyclops, his Optic Glass, the X in front of his eyes is in front of all the other ribbons. Thanks for tuning in for this episode. So I hope you learned something with how I use the ink brush and how I eat long, smooth, curvy lines. If you have any questions, type it down and I'll respond. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe.